In a nation of believers, one pastor accused of mass murder has Kenya searching its soul. It turned to people to animals, terrible animals. He led his followers into a forest where hundreds of worshippers starved to death. Many were children. What, what is that? That's a body. Scale boats. As authorities investigate, Christianity is on trial. In the name of Jesus, I destroy you. We as Christians, we would like to know the truth. What is happening in Shakaula? Is it true? I seek out families of the dead to investigate if this was suicide or mass murder. This is Shakohola. Hundreds of Christians migrated to this forest believing that Jesus would meet them as the world came to an end. But many of them never left and were secretly buried here. Since April, Shakohola village has been at the heart of a mass murder investigation. <laughs> But some did hear rumours. I'm with James and Jeffwa, who rode out to the forest to investigate after hearing that worshippers were starving themselves to death. When they arrived, they were met with violence. They called in the authorities who raided the site and then the police asked them to help digging out the bodies. They were unprepared for what they would find. The first day we got to know what we were going to do, we were going to go to the back of the house. We were going to go to the back of the house, we were going to go to the back of the how have you found it emotionally since the bodies were first found? Wow, I'm, I'm very, I'm very sorry. So far, over 429 bodies have been found and exhumations are ongoing. The authorities have locked down the site and would not talk on record. But I'm here to find out more about the man who has led what is being called a death cult. This is Pastor Paul McKenzie, a taxi driver turned pastor who preached that we are living in the end times, that the government, education system and even medicine is demonic and true believers should turn away. This self-declared prophet sold his followers a false hope of sanctuary from what he described as the coming apocalypse. Mackenzie's message was not always so extreme. In the nearby town of Melindi, I find Betty. 20 years ago, her family helped Mackenzie establish his first church. That's my girl who is praying for this woman here. That's our house in Malindi. This was the choir. <laughs> and I can't even see myself, I was here. Where, where are you? Here. What was the church like back then? Back then the church, it was live, you know. <laughs> and we were feeling God present. Wakati huo nilikuwa ni mzuri sana makenzi. Ilikuwa anahubiri vizuri sana. Simunaona hata katika maombisi yake ya kuombea pamoja, kanisa. Na nilikuwa linajaa kupita kiasi. The family abandoned Mackenzie's ministry when he called education a sin. But Betty's sister Mary and brother-in-law Smart remained and took their children to Shakohola. Both were arrested and detained with Mackenzie and his inner circle. This day, she's my sister. The one she's in Shakahola. That's her firstborn. My sister's firstborn, you see? And she's gone missing? Yeah. Betty is searching for her nieces and nephews. 
she's heard rumours that in Shakohola, people were not just dying from starvation. Yeah. That's, that's your yeah. brother-in-law? Yeah. So what has he been accused of? Of killing. If you want to run, you don't want to fast anymore, and you want to run and they know they kill you. So your brother-in-law was a part of a death squad? Mm -hmm. Yes. And would you have imagined, knowing him from these times, that that's what he would become? No. He was a God-fearing man, you know, very respectful man. So what made him change? Mackenzie changed them. Nobody has been charged for the deaths at Shakohola, yet over 600 people are reported missing. But some have survived, and I found one of them, a mother called Salama, who joined the cult after being captivated by Mackenzie's video sermons. <laughs> Salama and her husband followed Mackenzie into the forest. They believed his prophecy about the end times and say they were poised to make the ultimate sacrifice. Did you consider sacrificing your children? Salama's husband remained in the forest and has not been seen since. She told me that the first to die were the sick and after that the deaths were staggered. The children would fast first, then the women followed by the men. Mackenzie told his followers that he would be the last to die and would personally close the gates of earth, but he did not join their fatal fast. I want to know how so many people could follow one man to their death. In Kenya, 85% of the population are Christian and pastors here are more powerful than politicians. The pastor leading this service was a friend of Mackenzie's and preaches a similar gospel. Pastor Kim's followers believe he can heal HIV and cancer. In the name of Jesus, I destroy you. I set you free, young woman. Pastor Kim told me these healing sermons are normally packed, but since Shakahola, there are empty seats. The church elders are concerned. We, as Christians, we would like to know the truth. What is happening in Shakahola? Is it true? We would like to know. To us, it is just a rumor. But it's a bit more than a rumor. There's a whole body of evidence. There are so many testimonies. There are so many people who said, I left the church. I cannot say that. Uh, it is Mackenzie's who did that, or some pastors who did that. Because th those bodies, there are so many. How do we know that these bodies were killed either from somewhere else and buried in Shakahola? How do we know? How can the church in Kenya move forward if many members, elders like yourselves, cannot even accept that Mackenzie's doctrine led to the deaths of hundreds and hundreds of people? Let me answer you by saying this. Seeing is believing. So the woman who testified that she was cured of HIV, she testified because she is alive. It is a true testimony that she was cured after prayer. Now, how will I go and question somebody who is dead? How did you die? In this church, miracles are easier to believe than murders. But there is one place the answers to their questions can be found. Currently we have 339 bodies in the mobile mortuary which have uh, undergone post-mortem and we have another 87 inside 87. the 87 bodies which have just been exhumed awaiting post-mortem. 
The exhumation from Shaka Hola paused because the morgue is at capacity. So this is where you carry out the autopsies? Mm. A bit smelly. Oh my God, what is that smell? The bodies are not fresh. The most significant finding that cuts across body is that uh, they are, they've died of starvation, 80%. Yeah. And each body has been dropped and put side by side in a very organized way. The graves are big, putting up to five, six people. Some we found up to 10 people. There had been rumors that organs were being removed, but the truth is even worse. So far, we've not seen any person who had their organs harvested. Some of the bodies show that they've undergone some level of assault, being uh, knocked on the head. Some show asphyxiation. Uh, basically, that means they've been strangulated. You've literally seen evidence of children being murdered. The youngest we've seen is approximately two months old. Very, very young infant. According to the pathologist, not everyone starved to death. Some were murdered. What, what is that? That's a body, scale bones. The police are preparing charges for murder, manslaughter, money laundering, suicide packs, abduction, assault and conspiracy. So what are the names of the children that we're looking for today? Okay, I'm looking for my nieces. Uh, the names are Cynthia. But in the midst of such Betty. horror is a small Smith. window of hope for Betty. Smith. Betty has received two reports from children who survived Chacohola. She's been told one niece escaped, but that her other relatives died. If any were rescued, children's services will know. Is there are six, but here I have three, and uh, this one, four. I wanted to see if these kids were rescued, if they are there, if they are still alive. Since the first day I was showing the other people who have been rescued there, and they would tell me, yeah, this, someone, this and these kids, yeah, we know them, we buried them. They, told, they assured me but that they died. Who was their mother and the, who was their father? Yeah, Mary and Smart. Okay. The protection officer has heard the allegations that Betty's brother-in-law Smart is a murderer, that her sister Mary knew. He's convinced that Betty's young relatives are dead. Mary was, is married to Smart, a well-known character, a strong man in the hierarchy of Mackenzie Church. And when the children, all the children know them and knew the children pretty well. And do they say they attended the barriers of those children? It's true. Now what is sad is Mary doesn't want to say that these kids are dead. I'm sorry, madam, to tell you this. All those women who killed or forced their children to die, if they give you such an answer, those are killers. Mm -hmm. Cold blood killers of innocent children. Motherly instinct doesn't call to kill your children, but to protect them. I don't know what it is that Mackenzie and his teaching did, but turned to people to animals, terrible animals. And you know, the last time I saw her, before this happened, she came to my house and I told her, just leave the kids with me. She's like, no, I will die with my kids. Like, and she was talking like it was a joke, you know. So when this happened, I didn't know any it's true. <laughs> Betty's sister Mary has never admitted killing her children. Before Mackenzie moved to the forest, he was based in this huge compound in Malindi. The pastor ran this unregistered TV station, which broadcast his sermons across Kenya. He gained fame, a following, 
and a small fortune. We saw the real humble beginnings of Mackenzie's ministry. And this space here feels a thousand times bigger than where he started. This is unquestionably the American influence, the televangelist model, where the real God is money. In 2017, the pastor avoided charges after being accused of promoting extreme beliefs. He says he closed this church in 2019 and there was never one in Shackle Since being detained, he's always maintained his innocence. We just stumbled on the children of Mackenzie, his son and his daughter. Uh, they're still living here, much to the anger of lots of people. Out. Do you not feel guilty? I said out. Do you think, it's, do you think it's appropriate for you to still I be here? I said out. Is there really nothing you have to say? Is there nothing the family has to say? Do you believe he's innocent? Yeah. You believe he's innocent? Why do you believe he's innocent? Mm. Did you go to Chocohola? Have you been there? Have you never been there? So your father had a church in this village in the middle of nowhere, but you never went because he was telling other people to bring their children. Have you seen a church there? Have you went? Have we been there? Yeah. You saw a church? I'm sure you know that a church is the body of people. So we know there was a church, yes. There's no church there. There was a oh. church there. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. But the court of public opinion is more definitive. On the compound, these walls have been torn down by angry neighbours. Now in the wake of Shakohola, the government is cracking down on cultism. 90 miles south of Malindi, this is the ruins of a different church that was torn down in a raid by the authorities. Rainbow Ministries is accused of extreme fasting, removing children from their families and preventing them from attending school. When the security forces arrived, the pastors fled into the forest, taking children with them. I've come here to investigate these allegations. As we arrive, the young woman they believe is a prophet falls into a trance. Is she okay? Is she yes, she's okay. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm? Oh, I want to talk to mm. visitors. Yeah, he wants to talk to the visitors. Wow. Wow. She's saying that God wants to talk yes. to us. Mm -hmm. yes. Through her. Through her. Through her. Yes. Yeah. So right now, if she talks, you're saying that God is talking. Yes. Yeah. He's using her as a medium to communicate with you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have sent them here mm. to see what is going on and to get all the truth from the source. Mm -hmm. uh, the message is. God has permitted you to come here and to see all what we are undergoing currently from the source, not from what you had through the uh, other medias. That is false. What parts of the reports were not true? They are saying that we are not uh, are eating, we are not taking children to schools. He has permitted you to come here so that you can come and see with your own eyes. So God has permitted mm -hmm. our investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our, our investigation is ordained. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can see that very strongly. But our investigation has found a mother concerned about Joyce's emergence as a prophet. Mbeyu's son left home after Joyce had a vision telling her followers to live with the church. <laughs> wana wanaambukizwa tena zile hali za za kukataa kwao za kukataa wazazi za kukataa boma yao mimi nimeogopa sana kwanza kwa makenzi kulipoanza hayo na huku nako Joyce amelipuka mambo yake ndio mimi ninaogopa sana can hear some tones some tunes after being removed from the land they occupied, the church is in exile here on the border of Tanzania. We are just in time for Children's Church. Tunafaka 
kama watoto tumtii Mwenyezi Mungu tufanye yale mambo ambayo anampanya nini yanampendeza tusipofanya mambo ambayo yanampendeza atatuangamiza their doctrine is intense but in contrast to Shakohola, the children here are eating but are they hearing the same gospel as Mackenzie's we are told he will appear in the clouds of heaven and when he appears it is over there is nothing you can do you cannot confess to a priest you cannot uh, tell anybody of your sins to be changed to be changed you are either sinful or you are saved the church denies keeping children in unsuitable conditions and allegations of cultism they believe they've been unfairly pursued for the crimes of Mackenzie. Right now there is a tension between the rights of believers to worship and the duty of the state to protect. Because just where is the line between faith and extremism? This is a landmark moment for Kenya and how it fights extreme Christian beliefs. Mackenzie has been arrested and spent months in custody, but without charge. The longer justice is delayed, the more those affected by this tragedy, like Betty, lose faith. What do you see as the lesson, the lesson of this awful event, this tragedy? For me, the lesson is I don't trust the preachers. I don't trust them anymore. Because I believe Mackenzie, he knew what he was doing. Because he makes sure they don't have anything to live for. If he will tell you to kill your kids first, how can you live after that? So what does justice look like now? You know, even if Mackenzie will be hung right now, you know, I don't know if that will be justice, I don't know. Will you ever step back into a church again? No. In fact, I want to be a Muslim now. You want to convert? Faith is supposed to bring hope to our lives. So what value does it have if it brings fear and death? I leave Kenya at the beginning of a long road to justice, wondering whether this tragedy has triggered a battle for the soul of this nation.